I want to build a Slack app with y'all on Pipedream to show you how the Pipedream platform works. We're going to build a Slack bot that takes new messages that users send in a channel and just sends them a message back. And this shows end to end how you can create a Slack app, how you can subscribe to new events from Slack, and then run any node code on those events. And then we'll connect to Slack on the other end and just send a message back to close the loop. And with this pattern, I hope you'll see how to build any Slack bot that runs any node code and interacts with any third-party APIs. This is the beauty of Pipedream. It's an integration platform that is built primarily for developers. So the idea is you trigger a workflow on an event from any SaaS app. You run any code you want. You can require any NPM package, hit any API. And then you can also use a bunch of pre-built actions and app integrations that we've added to Pipedream to just make common operations easier. So you don't have to write all the code from scratch. We actually give you code snippets tied to each of these apps. We call these code snippets actions. And they're just like functions. Uh, you can write them and publish them yourself, and you can use any actions that have already been written for you. So we'll show how all this works end to end. Um, I'm going to sign into Pipedream and start by building our first workflow. But when you sign up for the first time, this list will be blank. If you click New Workflow, you can create your first workflow. So all workflows begin with your workflow. I've got HTTP, so I can run this workflow on new HTTP requests. That's what we're going to do today. I can also run cron jobs to run any job on a schedule, run jobs on new emails. We have a Pipedream SDK that allows you to send events from your own app to a Pipedream workflow as well. These are all documented in our docs. So if you want to take a look at the trigger section over here, we talk about all these triggers and exactly how we run them and how we handle the event data um, and expose that for you so you can run code in your workflow. I'll select HTTP. And an HTTP trigger generates this unique endpoint URL that I can start sending any HTTP requests to. I'm going to start by sending a test event here just to show you how this works. So this sends a fake HTTP request to this endpoint URL. Notice under steps.trigger here, I see the event data sent in that request broken out by the different properties of the HTTP metadata. So I can see the body here. It's just some sample data. Okay, this is the content of the HTTP payload because this was a post request. I can see the headers that were sent. I can see the client IP. But I can get access to all this data in my workflow. And I'll show you how that works in just a moment. This is just the first trigger step that exposes, again, the event data that was sent once I select the event here on the left. But I can add new steps by clicking this plus button below. So when we actually code our Slack bot, you'll see how this works. So let's build our Slack bot and actually start getting real uh, messages into this workflow. I'm going to go to my workspace and go to administration and then manage apps. If I select this build label up here and start building, I can create a new app. My test Slack bot. And then I'm going to install this to this Pipedream test workspace. There's a couple things we'll have to do here. This is probably the most complex part of this workflow, unfortunately, is building the actual app in Slack. So the first thing I want to do is configure permissions. This ensures that um, I have the right scopes for my bot to receive new messages. So I have to read the channel history of any channels my app has been added to. And then I want to get those events to my Pipedream workflow. Additionally, my bot is just going to chat a message back. So I have to have two scopes. I have to have channel history view messages in public channels that my test Slack bot has been added to. So it scopes it very tightly. You have to add your app to a specific channel, uh, in this particular case, where you want to receive new messages. And then again, I have to send messages as my bot. I just need these two permissions. I'm going to now install the app to my workspace. And I see these scopes that I just added 
that I have to allow. Now that I've done this, I get a bot user access token. We're going to use this in just a moment because this is how we're going to authorize requests against the Slack API from our PipeDream workflow to send that message as our bot. Before I do that, I'm going to configure an event subscription that allows us to receive new messages sent to this channel in our PipeDream workflow. So I enable events. I go back here and copy my endpoint URL and then paste it in here. So we automatically um, verify this URL. Slack has this verification process where they send an initial request to your workflow, this one right here that just got sent, with this challenge code. And Slack typically requires that you parse out this challenge code yourself and then respond to Slack with that challenge code back in the response body. We do that for you because you don't want to have to write code to do that. And we build enough Slack bots, so we've made that process automatic. So we've taken the challenge response, automatically returned it to Slack. So that's why it shows up automatically as verified. So this is part of the cool thing about Pipedream is we just try to solve for that most common use case. And again, we build a lot of Slack bots. So now I need to subscribe to bot events. This is where we are going to receive new messages from our channel. So I've already got permission to receive that. I just need to create the subscription to send those messages to this new URL. So I'm going to just search for messages, channel.history, message.channels. A message is posted to a channel. That's the event I care about. Okay, I'm going to save my changes. And then I'm going to go back here and just send a test message to my channel. Let's go to our workflow. And in theory, we should see this show up. I'm not seeing it, so let me just refresh this to see what happened. OK, that looks OK. Let's go back to event subscriptions. Ah, I forgot to do one thing. So again, I have to add my app to this channel for the app to actually receive events. So I'm going to go here, clicked on this person icon up here, which lists information about the channel. I expand apps, I add app, and then my test Slack bot is the app I just created. OK, I added that to my channel. Now let me send another message. And now I see if I expand, again, I selected this event here because I saw the new event arrive in my workflow. The data from Slack is sent in the body, the payload of the HTTP request. So I expand body. We have taken the JSON that Slack sends in this post request and converted it to its JavaScript object equivalent. And this makes it really easy to extract this data when we actually work with it in the steps below. So I've got my text here, the user who sent it, and the channel it was sent to. And that's all the information I need to actually respond back to the user. So let's do that. Let's add a new step to send a message as our Slack bot. We've got two Slack apps. There's the Slack integration, which allows you to send messages to Slack as the PipeDream app. So that authorizes PipeDream's access to interact with the Slack API on your behalf. What we want here, though, is we've written our own custom Slack bot. Right? We have our own Slack app, and I've got my own API key tied to my Slack bot. And I want to send messages as this bot user. So I copied this. I went to OAuth and permissions, copied this bot user access token. And I go back to my workflow. I choose the Slack bot app. And then I want to send a message as my Slack bot. So this is the action capability of Pyterm I was telling you about. If I select this, it just provides this code snippet that we've already written. And so you get this code for free. This step requires the Slack NPM package 
instantiates a new web client constructor that just allows you to interact with a Slack API. So you can look at the Slack Node.js SDK docs to see how this code works. But the web client constructor just accepts this API token that we just copied. To actually pass that to the step, I have to connect my account. So this bot token, I'm going to paste this in and then say my test Slack bot to identify it as the same name as the app I created in Slack. Can we provide instructions here in case you um, need to reference the documentation from Slack for where to get that? I'll save this. I've now connected my account. Now there's two required parameters I have to send for this send a message action. Okay, this chat host message API. There's the text. I'm just gonna say hello world for now. And there's the channel. So I need to send this message back to the original channel from which I received it. So to do that, I wanna get this channel ID. Now I don't wanna hard code it, right? Because I can get messages from multiple channels. So what I wanna do is say, this object reference all the way down to channel, I wanna get that. So if I hover over channel, and copy the path to this, I can paste that here as the value of channel. This drop-down menu shows up with the possible options. There's channel, then channel type. Okay, I want channel, so I select that, and it shows me the value of the channel that was last passed and the last event sent to our workflow. This just helps you validate that you got the right value. Okay, So I've selected exactly the variable reference I want, for the channel I want to send this message to. This will always send the message to the channel where the user originally sent the message. Let's now, I deployed my workflow to save these changes. Let's now send another test. Message gets sent to my PyTream workflow, and then I see hello world. Now, you'll notice I've entered an infinite loop because what I didn't do was check anywhere, do I need to respond to this message? So I only want to respond to this message if the user is a normal user. I don't want to respond to my own messages, and that's what I'm doing. Every new message that comes in triggers an event to my workflow, and I just send hello world back. So I need to stop this. You can see events are coming to the workflow, but we can just write code while that happens. Okay, so the list of events over here is distinct from the code editor on the right. Let me just add a new Node.js code step. This just lets me write any Node.js code. It's not connected to an app. This gives you a blank canvas. And I want to ask if, let's get an event here so we see, if the user is equal to this user, Okay, I could just hard code this string because that is the user ID tied to my bot. Okay, I know because these messages have all been coming from my bot. So if this user steps dot trigger dot event dot body dot event dot user, if that's equal to this string, then I want to just exit early and I don't want to send a message as my bot. So one thing that I didn't note was steps.trigger.event, you can actually refer to just as event. And in a code editor, we'll autocomplete references to the event object. So I can say event.body.event.user. That's a variable reference to this user. If that's equal to, and I'm going to parameterize this. Notice that I referenced params down here as a way to pass text, channel. I didn't show you these optional params. You can pass any other um, properties from the chat post message API. Okay, All of these are defined by these references to params. Params is an object, and any property of that params object gets exposed as a param that I can pass. Okay, so these values here are all private. And if I say params.user ID, as I type, 
I should get a new reference show up below to the param. And then that user ID is the string I want to pass here. Now, what do I want to do? I want to end the workflow early. So Pytorch exposes this function called dollar $end, which lets you immediately terminate the execution of a workflow and pass an optional message. Message came from our Slack bot exiting. Okay, and if I deploy this code, the next event that comes in should trigger this new code. And immediately here I see dollar $end message came from our Slack bot. You can see the execution ends here and we did not move on to this next part of our workflow. And I've got a million messages in here, but they did stop. Okay, so now let's test this workflow end to end. I'll send one more test message as myself. This hits the workflow. This did not come from my bot, so we do issue a response back. And if I go back here, right, this was the event I sent as myself. We can prove this again by expanding the body, the event, looking at the text. We triggered another message from the message my bot sent to the channel here. And then that triggered this invocation of dollar end. We ended the workflow early. So the cool thing about this is you can do literally anything you want in a PyDream workflow. Any code that you want to write, you can execute as part of this workflow. So if I want to add a step that runs sentiment analysis on the text of the message, I can add a new Node.js code step. I can require any sentiment analysis package I want to from NPM just by adding this require statement. Okay, so we actually parse out the require string, install the specified package, and then you get to write code using whatever um, client you actually import from that package. So there's no package.json. You just write code to require something, you use it. Pipedream behind the scenes, when we deploy your function, we will install those packages and give you access uh, within that step. So take a look at our docs. There's a lot more information about how Pipedream works here. There's a lot more you can do. Um, again, we have actually hundreds of apps with pre-built actions that you can connect to. So you can do really anything within the context of a workflow. You can hit a third-party API to um, you know, pass the text the user sent, get back a response, and then pass that back as um, some, uh, some response from your Slack bot. So I could hit my AWS account to get information on uh, you know, the number of running instances I currently have. And you could build a Slack bot that's highly interactive based on third-party data. There's so much you can do. Uh, we're really excited to see what you build. So uh, let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.